back to this point, um, your most important content should go at the top. So your menu is going to repeat on every page. Um, you know, Google's going to see that. Uh, but you do want your menu to be rendered in a, in a way that, that search engines can read. Um, and I'll, I'll show you this in a second. Um, so you want to have your most important content at the top. You want to have uh, semantic continuum. Okay? So basically, you want to use semantics to tell um, to tell that, or to tell Google what content is your important content. What does that mean? Uh, for the main topic on your page, wrap it in H1. Okay. So basically, what you're doing there is you're saying, Google, this is what this page is about. So you wrap it in an H1 tag. Style it to make it look however you want, but wrap it in an H1 tag, and Google's going to know this page is about this topic. Okay. And then for any for any subtopics on your page, wrap them in H2s. So by doing that, you're saying these are subtopics on this page. So by doing this, I mean, if you think about it, you're you're basically taking the same goal you have with, with doing the graphic design. So if you're trying to communicate an idea to an end user, you're doing the same thing with HTML to a search engine. So you try to communicate to the search engine, this is what my site is about. All right. Um, so a couple of other things you want to make sure that uh, you do have a descriptive uh, title. All right. So make sure you don't have duplicate titles throughout your site. Um, one thing that .NET Nuke does for you, for you, um, is if you put the keywords and meta description in the site settings, they'll use those for all your pages throughout your site, and you get penalized so bad for that with, with search engines. Okay? If you have duplicate meta tags, if you have duplicate titles, you get penalized for that. You're basically saying to, to search engines, this site isn't that important, so I'm not giving it its own title. So same thing with an H1, you know, you're saying, this is what this page is about. When you have the title, this is what this page is about. You got the H1, this is what this page is about. And then the content that's on your page is about what you said it's about. Th that page is going to get indexed, right? You, you know, it, it, there are other there are other offsite things that they make so you get better re you get better scores and you get better results, you get better ranking. But this is how you make it so that the content on your site is ready to be out or is ready to be indexed, right? So also write valid XHTML and CSS. So we talked about this earlier. The leaner the code you write, the less extra stuff surrounding the content that's important is going to be there, and the better you're going to get optimized. Um, same thing uh, down here. This is a trick that I started doing. Um, I like it. Uh, for my module titles, I'll actually, uh, when I'm creating a container, I'll actually wrap the title in an H2. Okay? So by doing that, I, the only thing I have to tell my content, you know, people doing the production for the site, the only thing I have to tell them to do is the H1 on the page. The H2s are going to be there automatically as long as they put in a scripted title in each module. Right? Does that make sense? So let's take a look at that real quick. If you take a look over here, and I grab a real quick, and I inspect this, you can see that right there, I actually have a wrap. I actually have that wrap in H2. So right here is the title. So this is a subtopic on here. And I've got it wrapped in the H2 right in the container. Okay? So let me show you how it can do it. Pretty, pretty easy, but I just want to show you real quick. Oh, you're fine. I'll just. <coughs> oh, okay. oh, no, I didn't see this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't believe really this. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you can take a look right here. We've got the ENN title tag. And I actually wrap this in H2. And so then as long as as long as my production team, people put the, put the content onto the site, as long as they're naming it something that makes sense, then they're doing the H2 form. And the only thing I have to train them to do is to put an H1 on the page so that you know so we can say what the, the main page is about. Alright? So it, it, these are just these are just some tricks that, that you can kind of do you, that you can do search engine optimization as part of your own workflow, um, and you deliver better code, you deliver better quality, right? Um, another trick. Okay, so that since uh, Will's gone, I'll cover a little bit what he's going to cover in his next session. <laughs> uh, with the relocation widget. Okay, so um, in Dominic Five, and, and this this is the part where we actually. Do we advertise? We're going to talk a little bit about skinning it up in the cloud. Um, there are there's a new there's a thing called widgets. There's a new concept of something called widgets. So they're client widgets, um, and what that means is that you have 
you, so think about the concept of a module and not a new, where you can add a module to a page. Well, there's that same kind of concept brought in with clients like JavaScript with widgets. So what that means is that you've got things that you can add to your skin that add functionality on the client side to your skin. So if you think about, and for those of you that have experience with uh, new skinning, you've got a skin object, which is which is a uh, server side, right? So a skin object would be something like your menu. Um, so I have one of those. Um, so on the server side, you've got a skin object, which you'll actually have server functionality. So um, the menu would be included in this. <coughs> the login control, uh, you know, maybe the registration control. Um, these are all things that are done in server skin objects. So a widget is client side. So that means that it's some kind of JavaScript functionality, right? So one of the widgets, or the only widgets that I'm going to cover in my session, if you want to learn more about widgets, I definitely encourage you to go to the session right after this, um, is the relocation widget. This is definitely my favorite. Um, I'm not going to even open JavaScript. Um, let me pull. Let me pull the <clears throat> so I get my widgets one. Okay, so in this, I'm going to go full screen again. Okay, so if we take a look here, we can see that I've got my content pane all the way at the top. So this is what I was talking about earlier. I've got the content pane before my my login, my, before my registration. I've got it before my menu. I've got it before any of the other clutter that's going to happen on my on my site, you know, to make it look good or make it usable for for the end user. So what I do then, if you look down at the bottom, I'm using the, the new object we have in Donna D5 to use a relocation widget. Code type is Donna D slash client. And then code base is relocation widget. This one's got two parameters, okay? So you say the source ID and the target ID. So, um, it's a little easier to understand. Uh, skip, don't look at the bottom part yet. I'll explain in a second. But the first one right here, I've got the source ID, which is my menu holder. My target ID is menu. So this is what I did there. Remember, I was talking earlier that there's a lot of clutter in the .NET Give core menu. Um, so I still I, I use the .NET Give core menu for this one because it's an example skin. Um, and I've got it within this menu holder. Thing. So you see the ID is menu holder. So that's the source ID. And then the target ID is menu. So remember we looked up here. There's where I want my menu to drop into. But when Google goes to index this, they're going to see where my menu is. They're not going to see the menu at the top. They're going to see the menu at the bottom. So all that all that clutter that comes along with the .NET menu, that's all going to be on my page. I'm saying this garbage, don't worry about it. The importance us at the top. So when this runs, after the page loads, or as the page is loading, using JavaScript, it's going to copy the source ID and put it into the target ID, right? So let's take a look at how this works. A widget page. And so this is my widget page. Okay, so you can see this is the same, looks exactly the same as the other one. But when we do a new source, very first thing, after the head, or, oh, I'm sorry, I'm logged in, so let me log out. There's a lot of extra nonsense. Yeah. Okay. Real widget page. Okay. Do a new page source. You can see right after the head tag, my content. That's the first thing in here. So this is the content, and that's my content, right? Compare that the one that doesn't have a top. You're going to see that you know, there's a lot of extra colors that come before that. So after it loads, it, it manipulates the DOM so that your content page moves into that content holder area. Same thing if you look at the bottom of the page. Here you see my menu. It also 